Hi everyone and welcome back to Getting There The Podcast with me, Brogan. Today I sit down with founder and CEO of Never Fully Dress, Miss Lucy Allen. I hope you enjoy. Lucy. Hello. Thank you. Hello Brogan. again. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? Yeah, lovely. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming here today. I'm excited to be here. So, you are... CEO, founder, yeah. boss bitch, everything that sits behind, never fully dressed. Mm-hmm. And for those of you who don't know... Jack of all trades. You are. Yeah. Uh, never fully dressed is a global women's wear brand that truly celebrates women. Even that... Uh, sorry, just quick. No. You can still use that in you title. Can... We make clothes for everybody to feel amazing so even women now I think there's so much fluidity within gender yeah I've come across I used to say that all the time but we make clothes for women to feel amazing but I think even that is more fluid now so well I think yeah. as a brand you've become quite yeah. more fluid yeah and I fell to when you said yes I was like so excited yeah. and then I was like I don't know that much about them, but I'm obviously you have a huge presence online and stuff. And I kind of fell down the never fully dressed rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. And this sounds crazy, but it's not crazy. But your mission so comes across in your clothes, I think. And I think it's so easy to witness. Like you talk about celebrating women and like you're saying about the flu- fluidity. Yeah. And like when I saw your advert that had like a huge range of like... People with different yeah. like body types, genders, disabilities yeah. and stuff. And I just feel like what you are doing is so remarkable. And one of the parts was on the website, it said, like, if we were going to be a girl, we would be your hype girl. I mean, yeah. And I totally but we get have that, that. Even when we're on set, when we're shooting now, any model, or when we're in the a changing room in the shop, like we're like, oh, my gosh, you look amazing. And even the models are like... Oh my gosh, I love being on set with you. And I'm like, is everyone not like this? But no, I don't think they are. We would take for granted of just being just that real powerhouse act of just people really realising how amazing they are. I I still think now, like, life's tough. You do whatever you're doing. If you're a mum, you're a nurse, you're a barrister, whatever you're doing, that's tough enough. So if I can just provide something like a bit of clothing, wherever it is, a bit of colour, that you stand in a certain way and you recognise your own power in that, you feel confident and you go off and do whatever you're meant to be doing that day better than we've played a little part. I used to downplay what I did. I was like, oh, I just work in I fashion make, or no. like, make like, yeah. But um, I do, I think it's like a film that you watch or a music that you listen to and it actually changes how you feel and then turn how you think and how you are. That, I believe in energy, so that just really... I comes back full Turns, circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's put out there. Like, my mum used to say to me as kids, like, even, like, my mum's really well-groomed, and she'd be like, whenever you feel especially poorly, like, pull yourself together. Do that bit of your hair, yeah, because yeah, yeah. when you just pull those parts of you together, yeah. like you say, pick something you feel confident yeah. in, then it's like... You're, you're halfway there. Do you know yeah, what I mean? No, I think my mum would be on her deathbed. Maybe they're of a certain she, era, yeah. literally being like, pass me my lipstick. Yeah, yeah, that, like, same thing. And I yeah. think that's what's carried across to you. Yeah, I still don't wear lipstick. No. She tells me now, she's like, oh, Lou, do you want to put a bit of lipstick on? I'm like, Jan, I'm nearly 40. Like, if I wanted to put lipstick on, I would have put lipstick on. Like, I don't want to put lipstick on. <laughs> so well, now, lipstick. yeah, yeah, yeah. She'd be like, I'll put your hair down. I'm so like, why the name Never Fully Dressed? Um, I wish I had a better story to this. I was sitting, I remember, in my mum's um, kitchen, and I actually used to guillotine we we do pre-love now so you can we've yeah, been we doing it for about at least yeah. seven years we've been doing it you can sell back your old never free dress and it's really fun now to see clothes that have come back from that time of when i used to personally print the labels and guillotine them and then stitch them in so we had some stuff back recently on pre-love that was from that time anyway so um sitting there making the like bases of the labels without the name on and I think it just came, you're never fully, it is from Annie, you're never fully dressed without a smile. And it's super cliche, and I'm not very cringy like that, but yeah, I don't but really care what you're wearing. Though? It is a it is a feeling, it is how you feel, that confidence that you wear. And it's not a very cool name now, I wish I picked like a... When was that? 2009, I want to say. But there's been so many, not so many different starts as in it's been unstable, but when I started it, I never set out with a business plan. I was a failed actress, and my mum's like, you've got to do a proper job. I started doing the markets, but I still used to travel about quite when a bit. When you say doing the markets, just selling clothes there, or you were just... Yeah, I used stuff. to make... So, yeah, I used to I used to do a bit of both. So my mum, I grew up on the on market stores. My mum always used to do the markets in mainly East London, but everywhere, really. Um, like Walthamstow, Roman, that's how I grew up. So I had that trade in my blood. Oh, I say, I wish my mum sold... 
oil instead of like <laughs> velvet hair scrunchies in the 80s because we'd be freaking billionaires. My mum can sell you anything. So bought up with that and then just started the markets making bits. I've always been creative, so could sew, could make stuff. But I did buy a little bit as well. So I'd buy and make. And then at the market, you get so much, uh, you get more priority if it's just totally your own. So it was only for a small amount of time that I would buy. And it would be from independent people as well. But um, just said, oh, no, I've just got to make it all. Um, and then you get like a better pitch. You get So you get better So when service. you're making the stuff, were you led by your personal taste? Were you looking at what was trend there? Like, were you thinking, oh, I'd like to wear that the weekend? Or were you thinking, I've not seen that done in the market? No, that's what, what you hear. Led by? That's what you hear mostly from founders, don't you? Of like, oh, there was something in the market that I wanted and didn't, didn't exist, exist, so I made it myself. But no, I've never really, this is awful, I've never really followed fashion in that um, sense. I never sit reading Vogue at 16 or like watched catwalks, but just always been creative, I think. I would always wear the craziest thing if people thought it was awful. Maybe there's a anti-conformist in me somewhere. If, I, if people thought it was awful, I'd wear it even more and bigger. Like it would just make, I'd get a giggle out of that. Um, so I suppose just a bit of a natural, I've always travelled, so I love colour from places I've been or different, I love fabric textures, so it's just a bit of a... Yeah, it's something quite cultural about all your of stuff that. as well, yeah. you can see that on there. Um, so yeah, so just bringing all that together and just making things. And then I suppose I've always had a commercial eye from being on a shop floor. Yeah. So having that thing, I think I know my customer really well, I know what a woman, what women want kind of thing. Well, and I think that's gone probably what to we'll jump to this bit in a minute, but yeah. like to what the brand is now. It's very multi wear. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, think I think that's that, the main string to your bow. I think that started as well. When I used to do the market, so because I didn't come from a design background, everything was oversized. Like a big oversized pattern I could cut and sew, but I couldn't make a Herve Lager or a like Roland Moray, like kind of fitted dress. That's not my skill at all. Um so everything was one size. So it would fit. So I'd have super trendy, young, slim girls on the store and it'd be like, oh, you can wear it with this way. But then I'd have larger, older women that'd be like, oh, you can layer it like this. So I think that's where that styling that, that piece comes, comes from. Yeah. yeah. And then it, I suppose as social grew, that came onto Instagram as well. That was a strength of ours. I'd, I don't want to claim it's a big statement. I think we invented the real. We were the first people that ever did ever did videos like that. Really? I mean, this was before when I first started social. There was no video on Instagram. You had Vine. I don't know if you remember Vine. No, we had Dapper in the other week. He was the first one. Do you know him on Vine? He had like a oh really? Oh wow, yeah. yeah. And then it came off. Then Instagram just copied everyone, didn't they, to bring it onto that platform. So the first people that I'm aware of that did that styling video on there. Um, and we used to just do it in time lapse. There was no editing apps. Now everything's so easy, which I think is amazing for people to do bedroom businesses and yeah. and boom, because there's so many apps that make every editing, filming, social, creative tool accessible to people that don't haven't had yeah, that training. Yeah, apart from me, I can't work it out. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so take me back. So you're on Sorry, the stools. Sorry, go on. Yeah, we jump in. No, yeah. It's what we do best. We're on the stools. Yeah. What are you selling then? Um, I remember one of my best sellers. I used to buy this from Italy actually like a knitted jumper and I'd go and buy trims from haberdasheries and stuff and sew that on and I'd be up um so my nan and great aunt were seamstresses in the east end like my families are from east london um so I had that from them my gr other granddad bought me a sewing machine so I could sew and I'd be up till like but it'd be rickety like sewing <laughs> and I'm living at my mum's like a rickety sewing machine till uh, you two in the morning <laughs> yeah and then up at four to do the market so doing no that way. myself and then when that got a bit too too much there was literally a lady at the post office that I met and her friend was an ex-seamstress so I used to drop stuff to her I'd drop maybe 50 garments to her saying can you sew these up and then pick up the set that she had done before and we'd do that and that it just built that way then the habit yeah was literally built, right? I know yeah that sounds so simple and lovely no, but it's way true, to work though, isn't I mean, it? and when you're selling at the market you can kind of sell anything because pe the people can see it in front of yeah. them now there's so many restrictions online and even with GDPR, it's, it's a different game to when I started. But at the market, you could sew if there was a drop stitch, whatever, you could explain that to someone and knock a fiver off. Like, you yeah. can't do it. Um, and the haberdashery that I was using, that was a Chinese family, and they were like, oh, we can we can make the whole garment for you if you want. So I never, China was the first place I manufactured, really, and not 
driven by and had no connections there at all wasn't driven by economies of scale or or trying to find mass production um and then I actually I still use them but then I had a factory in London a couple in London that I bought back but so is they that were the, the first next step people then that you start using the yeah and they would be making like 20 30 units for me which, which is, is mental because don't really yeah. do that no they were just a lovely little family to be honest um yeah so made with them, still making little bits myself and working with people. Then I think I used to sell on, I don't know if you remember, actually it's still about, ASOS Marketplace. Yes, yes, yes. I started selling on, on there and was their top seller for ages. And then they bought, so they started to buy wholesale from me. And then I think we weren't really... There yet? Ma- yeah. So we did it and I remember a friend who had a jewellery company at the time and she actually got it cost her to supply them because I think there's a fine for every label that's in the wrong place, a, a fine for this delivery that was made wrong. So we wasn't ready for it, do you know what I mean? And it was just a bit ag to find the production and you're nervous every week late is another fine off the bill. So you're supplying them with all this stuff, taking all your And then do resource. people almost want to stay on there just because it's giving them a bit of that platform? On ASOS? Then? Yeah, or not? Um, yeah, I mean, ASOS is a different place now. That's, they're not, yeah, um, doing great. But I love ASOS, I think they're... And I'm a bit gutted, I thought the other day, I wish they bought what is now the Ikea on Oxford Street. I thought they would have been the only people that would have made that work. You know where Topshop yeah. was yeah. before? Yeah. But yeah. I was like, oh, ASOS could have done a really immersive, Something multi-story... Cool yeah, I still think that. I think they're cool, ASOS. Maybe you in the future. Me. I used to, I used to have this idea of Bieber, I used to love Bieber, and I know had, they had the first... Um, what do you call it, like, first... Concept store, yeah, um, in London, and it was amazing. And yeah, this was in the seventies or something. Do you know what I mean? So I think that's, yeah, I had a dream of that, but now I'm not. So that was before ecom kind of. If up. we talk about your journey as an entrepreneur to start with, so when you start going out to China and like making this stuff, did you then start getting like your ducks in a row or like a business plan, or was it literally you were just making stuff for the weekends, or like how did it grow to evolve to where you've got now? Yeah, no, still not then. I was like, that's when I said, you know, when we've got different starts, I used to travel about, I'd go and go to New York, do the markets, Australia, spend a bit of time. I'd just travel about a bit. And then we got a store. My mum kicked us out of her house. I think the few women <laughs> who worked for me, like, I had keys to the house and she'd have a day off and they're in, like, 7am, like, morning, Jan. Jan's like, fuck, I just want Give a day a off. Break. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Fed and up I, like, threadbare yeah. her stairs. She's like, you're devaluing my house. Go and get your own thing. So we got the shop then, the store, local store, um, which was great. And I think that was a second start. So that was about eight years ago. And I'd say really that's when it started. That's when social started to be a thing for us. Um, And you've got overheads, you've got commitment. So I think it makes you work in a different way. Um, More responsibility. Yeah, yeah. And then... So how did it feel opening the store? Were you excited? Fine, it was just fun. I don't really... I wasn't ever... Still, I'd say since still COVID, was ever really conscious of what we were doing or building. I really, I really don't think so. Because then it, I still didn't have money. It, it wasn't like I set out with a business plan and you have an exit strategy and you work in a way to build a business. It was just, oh, this is nice. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it really wasn't a thing until we bought an FD on just before COVID. And he came from a much more corporate structure background and just... um installed a different way of thinking I suppose Mindset. yeah that was like oh okay we've got to be conscious of not how you treat staff because we've always had a bit of a family set up but like how that structure is for them how staff have Appraisals. career progression yeah like all of that on making this I'd love it to be the best place to work ever do you know what I mean but um did so that make, still working on that did that make you realize that oh this is a bit of a monster now then like Lucy from the from the market store is now giving appraisals and has got like corporate social responsibility and sustainable yeah, and I think that's not really my strength either, which is now we've brought someone else in. Yeah. That is the first kind of more managerial position that sits between myself and management. It's a bit of a game changer. I've been like, oh, okay. And I wish I did it earlier. I wish I made so many hi- more hires earlier on. I wish I hired our FD like, or an FD earlier on. Um, and why did I you not? I made bigger hires. I think I, I don't think I was confident enough to. I think I, 
I don't know if it's being a woman or British, all of those things, you're quite self-deprecating, aren't you? And I don't yeah. think... My sister works in the city, she's got a proper job. And she'll... <laughs> Sorry, can we just like, stop there? She's got a proper job. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, CEO of one of your I know, biggest. but like a real... <laughs> and she'll... Um, she'll. Isn't it mad our perceptions on I things? I know, like, but that's how I used yeah. to feel, even if she wanted to... And she'd asked me to even come and advise... Say some of her colleagues would want to be investing in other fashion companies, they'd want advice, and I'm like... Okay, no I'll come and help. Syndrome. But yeah, maybe I don't know. I just didn't wasn't aware, and I feel like I'd obviously everything's happens for a reason, and you are where you are. That's meant to be. But if I'd changed and actually gone for it much earlier on, I feel like it could have been a completely different beast. But I feel like I'm this year. I had a bit of a thing that I felt like I was starting again, and I'm like, ah, oh. oh, that now has just been my homework. That's my foundation, and I'm really excited of now where are we? Now where can we go? Like when you look at other brands, people that we would aspire, like a Gani or Farm Rio or whatever, they've been going so long. You think, oh, they've just someone said it to me the other day, like, oh, you've just blown up recently. I'm like, okay, when I was standing in the snow like 13 years ago, it didn't feel like now I've just like that popped up. Um, So I think you do all of that groundwork. Um, and I think this is a lot of the people that I've had on here that have gone on that have gone on to be successful. It's like you, we, and especially the generation that I live in, is like you think everything's an overnight success. Yeah. Like you've got this thing, like Billy in his front room whose balls haven't dropped. He was yeah. earning ten grand on the yeah. crypto a day, and they're yeah. everyone's the CEO of their life. And it's yeah. like, and it doesn't work like that. And that's yeah. one of the things that like I really wanted to push out. And we had a lady on here last week, Fran and Cutler as well. She was saying like, I just took so many notes. Yeah. You know, and it we get used to like instant gratification. Yeah. But I think it's that's, not like that. I think that's what people show though as well. Yeah. I think and uh, like I just said, I think social media is amazing. Do you know what I mean so many businesses and stuff have been formed because of it yeah. and friendships and everything. Um but there is that element of, of course, that's only what you're going to show that... Highlight, not Yeah, light. and people see that and think that that's instant. And it's, yeah, it's not really. And we have it, I see it quite a lot now with younger members of staff coming through after not long at all. Like someone will want progression and someone might not be there yeah. yet. Do you know what I mean? Or someone sees you in a position of power or whatever it is and you're like, I've been... I did the Maybe, markets for yeah. that long. Like, I don't know. There's a different... It's different work mindset. On yeah, and, I, and it's tough because I'm not... Um, you are a product of your society or your time. So it's no one's fault that there's a different mindset now. It is what it is. But I do think that the online stuff is made... Like we think everything is instant and available. Yeah. And it's like, but maybe it is. Maybe that's something that we not, don't relate to because that's not how our mind works. So actually, when they're going, well, no, I can get progression elsewhere or that is a thing you can't deny that because it is a thing for them but yeah but you seem like oh yeah i'm a crypto millionaire and then like okay now you're not yeah and that's also five minutes later yeah and i think i don't don't want to sound old because obviously i'm not that old i'm 33 but it's like we take for granted that you really can't get these places with sustainability without hard work yeah that's the thing it is i think it's resilience and someone quite high in a bank, very high, he owns the bank, um, a massive like international bank, um, said like if you do something long enough for well enough, it will succeed. But I think now there's not that... Um, Momentum. Yeah, just that resilience piece I think is lacking, which is a shame. I think you, um, yeah, you have to work a little bit longer at stuff because you only see the, the big high, like yeah. you say, the crypto, and, big high and a big low. And probably people in your space, right, because... The fashion wear, like you see a lot of it now, like the the boohoo, the pretty little thing, it's yeah. instant. Like Kim Kardashian wears something, they turn yeah. it around in two days, and it's yeah. like this instant. So when people are trying to get into a space of yours that's already oversaturated, yeah, it, it it to build a brand takes decades. Yeah, and again, but with what you're saying, so you see that oh Kim K wore this and it sold out in three hours. That's what you see. You then don't see. Um, they tried to replen it and make it a cheaper factory for less so they could improve their margin and order thousands and thousands. But the hype had gone then, so they had this massive inventory problem with a poor quality. Like, they'd never report on that. So now they're stuck with all this stuff that the return rate was so high. All of those that they sold out might have been returned. Yeah. You don't see any of that. I think it's... Um, we're in a bit of a world... I heard a friend... Do you know Dave Abramovich? Yeah, and grind. grind. Yeah, yeah, founded grind. Um, I heard him on a podcast actually saying, "We're in a society where you don't praise that middle ground anymore. You you praise Elon Musk or who like these massive 
moguls, but you don't praise someone who just owns a corner shop and manages to make a living, employ two people, have a nice... Like that stability. Stability is not very sexy, is it? No. You want that wild yeah. night out. The per- do you know what I mean? That, so, yeah, it's just not very sexy. So I think that's not what people really drive for. Oh, I've been at my same uh, place of work for 10 years. Oh, well done. Like, no, that wouldn't be a thing. You'd be like... Oh, what have you got? No ambition. Or have you, do you know what I mean? I think that's not a thing. Whereas my grandparents would have just done the same thing. Uh, yeah. And you would have kept doing it and doing it and doing it and had the framework to yeah. keep it there. And a bit like what that guy was said to you, like yeah. long enough and hard enough. Yeah. So, and you learn all the time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think that keeps it interesting, but it's just making but I sure. There. I yeah, think go on. you've got to be open to learn. Yeah. And that's the difference because you get some people like, well, you're not open to learn where it went wrong. They're like, oh, well, that didn't work. But like, yeah. okay, right, let's sit down, let's reevaluate. Why did that not work then? I think, I think you've got, like you say, you've got to want to learn. And I think your mindset is very different of why you work. A lot of people, we say, do you know I mean, you need to work to learn, not just earn. So That's a nice quote. Yeah, it's... And I think sometimes if your situation's different and you have to um, earn, that is it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? If you've got kids to feed and you're like, well, sorry, I can't learn in this. Do you know what I mean? I just need to grind for a different reason. So I think it's whatever you put out there of what you're looking for, um, you, you do. You see the world as you, you are. Do you know what I mean? Not what it is, really. So I think whatever you're looking for, you'll find. It's quite scientific, actually. Yeah, it's in true. Your, so funny. Um, Mo say that on our launch episode, and he yeah. was like, he because he's quite mathematical. Yeah. So he's quite mathematical, and I'm like super spiritual, right? Yeah. And he was like, so he done this equation. You've got to listen to the episode. And yeah. He was like, so he went out to look for all missing pieces. We'll have to get the quote up, James, right? But missing pieces of jewelry, and he found something like oh, I don't want to quote my I don't want to quote myself on my own episode, but. Um, and he was like, within X amount of time, he'd found X amount apart miss, missing pieces because he was looking you for the will, missing pieces. You will, you will. I do, um, I've got a good friend and it's it's not even a side hustle. That's how small it is. But work with, um, about manifestation and we do like some little, I'm quite into Can kids. we come? Pardon? Let us come. Yeah, cut. it's not a thing. I'll send you some yeah. actually for Henry, like little... Um, affirmation cards. Affirmation cards, but for kids. Yeah. I was quite into the... Um, but she's not had an easy... It all starts when you're younger, right? Yeah. So you've even already hit on it. Yeah. Um, oh no, I do. I believe put that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In like your kind of ethic and yeah. personality, and I think you being on those trade stalls would have given you a certain amount of resilience as well, right? Yeah, because yeah, you would of have course. had however many people come up you, judge your item. No, but that's not good enough. Bar yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull you I know you that down. was the worst. You'd have people bartering, bartering, and you're like, okay, I'll just, just literally give it to you for nothing. Yeah. And they'd get out a wad of fifties, and you're like, oh, for Say, do you yeah, know what I mean? Take, and I know, take. I know. But, you know, like when you look back on your journey, you can see where the resilience comes from because, like, also, like, t- physically, to have that many people that you'd be seeing in a high yeah. turnaround environment critique your stuff, yeah. bar to you, also like applause you, you would get you really yeah. at one with your customer, yeah. And I think that could be, I don't know, like, one of the things that's given you such longevity, but. Yeah. So I think that with I think the resilience is from my mum. She's that type that if you didn't want to do something, you still have to do it. If that's your, she's quite not martyry, but of just a background that um, that's what you do. Whereas I'm struggling now. My husband's a bit the opposite. Like if one of my kids doesn't want to go football club that day, I'm like, well, you got to go football club. I don't care if it's pouring rain, you're going yeah. football club. Whereas my husband's the opposite. So just learning that. I don't know. There's it's, different it's ways to look right at way, it. I know, there? I know. Well, yeah, my way. Yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to be open to someone else's right is also right. Yeah, yeah but I think if that probably goes back to your nature. Like, yeah. no, you said you're playing football club, play to the end yeah. of the season, and then you don't do it. Yeah. Right, so you've opened Gone, the store yeah. in Buckhurst Hill. Yeah. Busy? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But well, I think the goalposts are always moving, so am I busy then? No, then, yeah. Would have take, us, take me back yeah, to yeah, there. it's hard. I had, I was renting, do you know what I mean? I'd, like, I had no kids, no, like... Busy was fine then. Like that, what was busy then was fine. And did you ever look at the bigger pitch then? Or no, you... still not. No, I never. Um, I re- yeah, really didn't until COVID, and then only till only then I was. I think I was conscious of. I think the communication with customer become even tighter. Um, do you know what I mean like on in social grew so much? Were you running your socials? At yeah, that point? yeah, yeah, yeah. I still do, really. Oh, We've got do a head you? of brand, yeah, who's very involved, and we'll do it between us. And there's a, I say, my sister and someone else who are in that team. 
Um, but yeah, we're still very, still very much on it. So COVID happens, right? Yeah. Are you thinking, fuck? Yeah. Are you scared then? Um. No, I don't think I was scared. So you were sitting quiet. on loads of... What were you doing? Were you sitting on loads of stock? Did you like... I mean, what happened with... Obviously, you're now working in China and India. Yeah. That must have stopped. We're so how very are you agile. making stuff? We're, we're quite agile as a business. We've still got staff who have been with us since the beginning. Kind of That's the strength of ours, I think, of that, which is also maybe now hindering that next stage of growth, which is a different conversation. But we... um. We good. We work well like that. Do you know what I mean, we're hands on. We're quite. Um, I quite like that. A challenge. Yeah, frozen you know in mean? the mud. Yeah, yeah. So we enjoyed that. We really changed how we worked as a business. And I say we're so community focused anyway. That held us in quite good stead. So that communication was really open with our customers. That's when we really launched Curve properly because all of the partners closed their doors, so no one was having any intake of stock, and we had. We used to make for ASOS yeah. um, curve, like extended sizing, and they were like, no, we're not taking it. So we were like, okay, we've, let's try it with our customers. So Something that we wanted to do. For, yeah, but, but in a very small way, but wanted to launch it bigger. Um, and that was our... Almost catapulted you into yeah. that space, So how lucky, do you know what I mean? You've just got to look at but everything But during that COVID, way. how were you able to make clothes? Well, the, the stock's already there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Some... And it worked in ways, even now China sometimes closed. So we make UK, Romania, Turkey, China, India. India was hit really bad later yeah. on. Do you, I mean, it so you was, just I worked. remember that actually. And at that time, that's when freight went mental because everyone was just trying to resource and move everything to Europe. All production kind of came to Europe in that time. Um, Sounds like it had its new life cycle after yeah, COVID. Yeah, yeah. So, but we just sold stock that we were sitting on we would do smaller runs we worked a lot with the uk factories then as well which i'm sure they loved and then um it's been tough for factories i think because then everyone since covid obviously a massive i mean a war in russia broke out a war everywhere like i mean there's two wars um yeah literally um economic crisis so then a lot of people so many people have gone bust since then and then factories that grew during that time have just been shut down so that's a shame um so again, bringing on that resilience, I think just having that stable business for us has been key to still being about. But you kind of that you blew, did up. blow up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, that, I would say um, we did. Yeah. And I think I, tell you, I don't know if this is a bit blowing your trumpet, but it was the first time really that I was present on social. Um, yeah, it's not blowing my trumpet, but it's just no, kind of establishing I, yeah. in a way of that is the. Kind of business that works for us now. Because you've got like over a million followers online on the thing, the brand. Yeah. One point four is it? One point six, maybe 1. since we last spoke. Yeah, it still grows quite fast. So, but really... that's mental. Yeah. One point <laughs> six million people follow you. Yeah. So X amount and know who you are. Yeah. Like that's mental, Lucy. And we quite actually just from found the out young this girl week. that would just like sew on stuff in her front room. Yeah. But no, last week I found enough a few companies. So like the. I don't know if I can say this. Say, say this. Like Henny's, um, Henny's, H and M. I'm showing my age. H and M. H and M. Like we're the poster boy for social. They, like in all of their meetings, they would have us. That that's what they aspire. I know the same with New Look. I know Bash. They came up to me in New York. The the people who ran all of that in for Bash and came up and was like, Oh my gosh! Like your like our boardroom topic. I'm like, I, can't, I don't even wouldn't think that you would even know we exist. Just, so social has been. We're quite. Going back Leedy to the social, did you, were you in um, intentional with that? Or again, is it no. just been like No, not at the beginning. Flow? No, not at all. Not at the beginning. And only since COVID. So this is what I would say. Since COVID, because of that customer engagement, I think, it was the first time I was like, oh, um, this is, I think we're building a brand here. So, do you know what I mean? I don't think that I was conscious of brand before. So this is a podcast you can't see me doing. <laughs> Unless it's recorded. Yeah. Um, uh, in inverted commas, um, building a brand at that time. So, and I was like, oh, okay, what is our voice? What do we want to... Um, stand for. Yeah, stand for here. So I'd say for only about three years, that's been conscious, which is, so now when you see um, the diversity or the inclusion or the... You can see your mission behind it. Though. Yeah, like I think that's only, but yeah, I think that's only been conscious and evident in that time. I think naturally, like I said before, like, We've always had an honest voice. I think that's how I work. Do you know what I mean? For me, a liar's far worse than a thief. Do you know what I mean? I, that's just, I just don't like 
that way. Do you know what I mean? So I've always had a bit of a heavy, grounded stance when when I started or just in my life. Um, so maybe it was there, but not conscious. But since COVID, it's been much more conscious, and I'm aware now of it how we like use our voice. Up in and COVID. yeah. You yeah. were doing it, but you really became intentional with what you were yeah, doing post COVID. Yeah. And even I'd say from then that was conscious. Every year it would be even more tuned in. Like now we're very I say an amazing girl who who's kind of come through. She's like a lot of people for us start picking and packing and then they come through. <laughs> she's our head of brand. Oh um, amazing. Is, yeah, I she's love amazing. That we've life got, cycle we've got so many. Honestly, like our our head of buy in, she used to be a buyer before kids and a lot of people then they have kids and which I think is just horrible I know um um mother pucker like has really I think I she's just her. got it yeah, yeah yeah I was on um a panel with her recently but and has is just got lovely? her bill passed yeah great um but on that equality piece I'm I think I'm lucky I feel like I've never really um experienced any prejudice from being a woman as a woman in business probably because I wasn't aware that I was a woman in business until the last few years um but that, like, so she's had a few kids and was like, oh, do you mean I need a little local job now? You can't think career, which is, again, another conversation, but um, crazy. Were you, did you get any prejudice pre-COVID? Before you really launched this curve range, yeah. were you getting people crying out like, oh, I'd like this, but do you do bigger, bigger. sizes? Like- very rare. Very rare that we would say, oh, can you make this bigger? Every now and again, but yeah, not really. So what sizes do you go from now? Um, a UK... Four in petite to a 30. Wow. So do you do each item has that range? Yeah, the four is in petite, so not everything is in petite. Yeah. Um, whereas when you're saying about curve, the amount of people that we had crying out for petite really? was yeah, massive. So and, and in the US, they really ask for that size zero all the time, So which is why we've launched the four. Um, and not everything goes to a 30. Everything will go to a 28 a UK 28 um, and the kind of so continuity pieces in a 30. having that scale is what's allowed your business to grow as well? Yeah, I want to own that space. I've been quite ignorant, to be honest, really, um, because I've naturally been slimmer my whole life. So to not... Like, I wasn't aware that one wouldn't have that experience of when you're young and you go shopping on a Saturday with your friends or with your mum and then only being on the shop floor now and I see genuinely women Joy. in tears. Women in tears being like, thank you. Like, that they've never had that experience of, of going and physically shopping. You could How find a specialty store online. Yeah, the energy's amazing. And I wanted it to make be, it all worthwhile. Yeah, I wanted it to be as well. I always think of like Kate Moss and Beth Ditto's friendship. Do you remember them? Yeah, yeah, of um, course. And that was like in the top shop days, like and I was like, I want these two friends to be able to shop at the same place. The same like, experience. Yeah. So I th- I think that's what we're creating. So and then you opened up in New York post COVID. That was right? this year. Yeah. Wow. We opened the store in New York. How did yeah. that feel? Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's fun. But you, there were girls on the shop floor crying again, weren't there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's really lovely to be a part of um, out there. And I think we're doing something, we're a bit different for the US. Um, Why? They're not that, they just don't have that kind of trendy culture. So yeah. we're quite eclectic, we're quite, like, I don't think I'm out there at all. But out there they'd be like, like they think it's quite different. Quirky. And, yeah, quirky. Um, I think our styling has come into play a bit. People like, which is rare, because we've only got the one small store um, in, in the London. UK. Yeah. Um, you can't buy into everything that we show on social. You can't do a bit head to toe and no. styling. Whereas in store, it's been nice to be able to, like I've made little jewellery bits and stuff. I'll collect and create and put it in there so people can get the whole, so I've, my throat's good. Oh, so you can get that. Oh no! <laughs> uh, so you can get the whole NFD energy, and you can yeah. feel that um, from what you get on social. So that's what we're trying to build on. We're looking for something locally in Why London. New York? But the US is really growing for us, so it's yeah. just grown organically. So we've done quite a few pop ups. There, yeah, yeah. We still ship from London everything, um, which we've looked can into. Can you ship all over really the world scared. then? So anyone yeah, can shop. Yeah, we ship dress. into. 145 countries. Jesus. Yeah, as a, not like one order either. We would only count a country if you're over X amount, like only over X amount of orders a year. So we, yeah, we're really worldwide. Yeah. Our international service is good. 
Probably so have you got anywhere lined up you think for next then? We're trying to get something central London, but I've been trying for about three years and I can't... You know, when you know an area so well, you you're so fussy. Up. Yeah. On, do you know what I mean? You, you become fussy. I think that Carnaby Street's your thing. No. Yeah, Carnaby. There's a few offers in Carnaby. I'd quite like Kings Road. I feel like there's a good alignment of stores there. But we just lucked out. In New York, we did a pop-up in the exact store that we've got the oh, shop wow. in. wow. Um, and I was like, oh, just the energy was right. It was just such a good store. And the street, the block that we were on is amazing. Really good neighbours and um, I was like, oh yeah, let's try and make this work and it did. What Whereas I didn't know the area so much. You're like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, let's go for it. Whereas in London, I think, oh no, this is the wrong end of the street or that's the, the wrong yeah. neighbourhood just because you know it so well. I was waiting so for well. the Queen to come out of Buckingham Palace. Yeah. Oh, she can't yeah, say yeah, that anymore. Yeah, yeah. She's dead. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, but what about like LA or something? Yeah. So I lived in LA a little bit when I was younger. I know LA quite well. Um and we've done a few pop-ups there, and they're good. It's a slower pace. Like, I love the energy in New York. It's just a, yeah. it's just a good vibe. vibe. Yeah. Um, and I don't think the brand is big enough in the States to open in L.A. L.A. is a destination city, so you have to drive to where you want to go. Whereas we need a bit of footfall, footfall a bit of tourism and stuff as well. Um, it's a bit of a mix in New York. But we're getting that. I think we're doing a pop-up in Miami in spring. Fun. Yeah, Miami, we resonate quite well in Miami. And the southern states love us. I think the colour, yeah. going into South America like and Mexico, they really love our product. So, yeah, looking at what the pop-up schedule looks like next year, and then if something works, then we could look into permanent or franchises. That's kind of conversations so now. So do you of, still do a lot of wholesale? Wholesale is about 20% of okay. the business. Um but we're looking, our head of wholesale has just come back from New York, actually, so been in market out there. So that's something I think the US are a bit, not as confident, but they need uh, confidence yeah. um, in it being stocked in places. I don't know. Maybe they're not as risky. So I think we need those partners out there to there grow the next stage. Out there. Yeah, maybe. But so the, I think we've spoke a lot on. about um, the highlights of the business, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's, cut. Let's been, keep it there. Yeah, no. There must have been some serious fuck-ups along the way, you know? Or things that went wrong. Did you ever feel like, I just can't do this? Because it is yeah, a every beast, day, I probably yeah. think that. Um, I think staff's one of the hardest things. And that's not a major fuck-up, like you said, but like just an ongoing thing of sometimes you're like... Like, I never chose to be a boss. You know where I said I never... Um, had a business plan and this is what I want to achieve. I want to be this CEO or whatever. You quite like being people's mate, really, and then you suddenly turn around. And you're like, "Oh, wait, I'm no one's friend. I'm just a boss." Like it's that's not so fun. Like and little things that you're like, oh, "I don't want this anymore. I don't want to be that person." Don't reprimand people. No, that's or just like, I don't know, just be that Do you person. Remember who, when you had the first person you had to sack? I remember one. Yeah, who was we had that to hard? Sack. Yeah, because she was really lovely. She just made a few mistakes, like, but quite bad. Like, quite bad. It was a shame because she was really nice. Yeah. And then it got, since the FT <laughs> joined it, like I say, that corporate, he's, he made it easier. I mean, just kind of just of that distance from yourself from it. And yeah. uh, just learn how to delegate. toughen up in that. Yeah. Delegate a little bit to your managers who, if they're in their department. Um, and just how to manage that. We did have, I'm trying to think of major things that we did have our Instagram hacked once and that oh, was Jesus, yeah yeah happened? and I remember that thinking panic li I was like oh my gosh I've worked for it was maybe only about maybe it was pre-covid oh actually was it pre-covid so it feels like it was about four years ago okay um covid threw all sense of time out the window I feel like you're like yeah the other day yeah. like five years ago um and I remember thinking oh my gosh I've worked my whole my life. whole life or like career whatever and it's just gone because that is your voice. Do you were know what I mean? Isn't posting it posting and... things or no? But then they were WhatsApping me personally, being like, "Pay me X amount of money and we'll um, give it back and stuff so like that." Happened? And you felt quite violated because they were ha how on got... obviously it's all connected, but like, yeah, messaging me personally on my number. So how did it was you all get just it a bit back? Weird. I think we spend so much money with Facebook <laughs> on advertising, and um, we've got a few connections there that were like quick and only because we managed to get in there so quick that they could I don't know how long freeze was it out it. of your control for um I'd say about a 
a day. Still scary. Yeah. And I remember thinking, fuck that, that's that's it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, our email yeah. database is good and, I, and you can build that yeah. up again, but that's your voice. Like, of, um, even today we went, we launched an app exclusive sale today and you can see literally our social posts on your traffic to site, on your search. Do you know what I mean, it's, it's pretty yeah. key for us. That was probably a bit scary. Yeah, that was big. Um, COVID, like I said, I wasn't worried. You just felt bad because we had to rejig staff and stuff, so that's not fun. Um, like, people are... You're responsible for people on there. Have people ever... Um, has anyone ever approached you to invest? Like In their businesses? Y- y- in, well, both, Oh, really. sorry. Like, like, people oh, to invest into us. Yeah. Well, during COVID, I think because... Ecom just went crazy. Consumer businesses went crazy. All of a sudden, everyone's in your ear. This is how much your business is worth. And it it can be quite distracting. I remember, like, and you're starting to think on those lines. It all sounds yeah, quite exciting. Yeah, Yeah. Um, and then it's all about timing. So, And I don't think... Um, I've never worked with anyone. So unless someone had a proposal that I was like, yeah, money... I know this is a very, um, I'm very entitled to say this, but I mean, money's cheap in that business sense that there's a lot of people that yeah. can provide money, but it's more uh, expert. It, for me, in my place in that career at the time, it was more, okay, how do we get to the next level? level? It was more recognising that I don't have that expertise for that next stage. So I don't think any money injection would have got that, unless then you hire with that. Yeah. Um so it was more who's done that next stage of growth and what can you so then did bring people in come that. To with offers? Yeah, if it, well, yeah, a few people. We had a few conversations. Um, you pleased you never took them on? Yeah, I don't think, I say we're a, I'm a split business person. So I think it's all or nothing for me. I think that's how I am as a person anyway. Um, so there was just, there's never really been a right partner that I'm like, oh, wow, this is what you can bring. I think I could really work with you and, and you gel like that. Um, and it's just quite distracting. I say, unless someone, as they say, one in the hand is worth two in the bush or whatever. Do you know what I mean, unless someone's literally written you a check and said, this is what it is, it's so much talk so what would and it so take distracting. What would to sell then? Um, well, I've always said this. Sorry, I genuinely believe in the potential of the brand. I, I, I know it can be a massive player in the world. You can see that now. Um, yeah, I say, in what in that um, responsibility of our voice and yeah. just a genuineness Celebration. of Celebration. Yeah, I think that's that's not there. Even now, it just baffles me. All these fashion weeks, and you're like, not one person is smiling on a catwalk. It's, it's yeah, a weird it culture that I know, I know. So I, I think that. it's rare what we've got, and I think I believe in that potential. So I'm, I've always been quite open of how that gets there. It's much more, this sounds really martyrish and I'm not, but like, I believe in that mission being played out more than a glory of myself being CEO and it's this size. Yeah. So I'm open to what that path looks like because I want to see Everyone it wins. be the, yeah, yeah, the voice I know it can be. Yeah. So it's not something that's on the cards at the minute about selling or anything? There's no conversation at the minute, but I'm... Which you probably would have seen in in my past so far. I'm just quite open to anything. Yeah. I, I I quite just like going with the journey and. So what would you say to young entrepreneurs that are gonna are trying to get into this space? Like, what would your advice be to them? Well, I suppose it would be advice that I Never would give to myself anything. before, yeah. and I think I, I really wish I'd dreamt bigger earlier on, because I think I could have done that. I had that hunger. I don't know. I had that. But maybe I wasn't, um, like I said, I didn't know what I was building. It was just, yeah. um, so I think dream bigger earlier on. I wish, even we've alluded in this conversation, like I wish I hired earlier on. I remember, is it um, Sarah Blakely, the founder of Spanx, who I, so I find her. really inspiring. She's amazing. Um, I think she hired so early and just loved someone and was like, I love your energy. And, I, and I've kind of taken that on board. If I love someone now, like the head of buying, which, which she was picking and packing and we then outsourced our pick and packs. There was no job for her. But I'm like, I can't let your energy go. So just make, like, give you a job. 
So I think that's the thing you can't teach and really hold on to those people with that energy and that, whether it's work ethic or just an energy that you connect with. Because you can teach a skill set easily. Um, but that energy you can't teach. So find those people, hire earlier on in all of those skill sets that aren't yours. Like I say, that organisational, structural... I'm only doing that now. Do you know I mean, if I'd done that, when I hear... Um, I think uh, Amy, sculpted by Amy, a beauty, an Irish beauty brand. I, I was on a podcast with her and she spoke so, she's so much younger than me, spoke so eloquently on the business side of what she was doing. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so inspiring. I think if I knew and was talking how you were talking years ago, where it would be. But then you've just got to trust that every stage that you've had yeah. has brought you to where you are now. But, yeah. But you've got three kids as well. Yeah. <laughs> how... <laughs> How do you do it? I think you're just you just get used to a certain pace. I'm Chaos? probably just not mentally stable enough to ever be not busy. Oh, do you okay. know what I mean times probably if I have a, if I have an <laughs> afternoon off, I'm like do you know what I mean I'm one of those annoying so people like I'll moan stuff. about how tired I'm. Yeah, literally. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, I'd moan about how tired I'm. Like, oh, I did it, but then. If I had time, I'm... A bit You'd like, go and take a two-hour nap. Yeah, I literally sit there. I'm like, oh, what do I do? I would honestly sit at my dining table just being like, okay, what what do I do? And I would I, the other day. I but literally would you just paint find... my living room. No, honestly, I did last night. Right? <laughs> I was like, I've got, oh, seven, eight o'clock. Next thing you know, I'm pulling stuff out. Yeah. And I'm like, because I'm moving soon. And I was like, well, let's just get rid of everything yeah, now. And it's yeah. one o'clock in the morning. I've got food bags <laughs> at my front door, potty. And I was like... Dude, you're not moving for a month. Oh, no. But you get in that like, yeah. okay. and I was my like, so in that, the zone. My mum said when she came home from work one time when I was young, I was maybe about 10, and I'd painted my whole room black. She was <gasps> like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. So I'm just quite impulsive, I suppose. So um, how did you yeah. find it? So Francis is your oldest, he's six. So yeah. Bringing him home and then like finding that work-life balance. And your time. Well, I think at the, at, the, at the time, I laugh now, when, when I had Francis, I thought I was busy. Do you know what I mean? And then... The next child, you're like, oh, I'm busy. Like, so I don't know where I can go from here because you're just um, busier each time. You just, he just slotted in quite easy. Yeah. Because it wasn't, I say, at the time I thought I was busy, but, oh, nice. I used to, I used to walk to our store. I still used to do, like, yoga. Like, so I don't know. Oh. Yeah. He started, um, like, nursery really young. So maybe that's not so very what, good of what me. So what kind of, like, positive legacy or, like, personality traits that you've got that do you want to be intentionally pass on to them I think that resilience piece like mm. Francis he wants to go Henry for his for Christmas so sweet it's like 25 pounds I'm like <laughs> sweet that's his like main present um <laughs> so he moment. can understand I heard I think it was the guy who founded DHL or something like that and he was like he gives his kids a five or a month and then he tells them to save a pound give a pound to charity or something and you've got three pound to spend so let's just use this figure and then Say like the kids now, if they say to me, oh, can I have a drink? I'm like, yeah, cool. Yeah, go and buy yourself a drink. And then actually it comes about if they really want the drink. Because now they just ask for a drink because they can have a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, or whatever it is, I'm saying drink, but a toy or whatever. Um, and I don't like that attitude. Um, I'm struggling with that now. It's like Henry's three next week. Yeah. And we go to the shop. Listen, whether it's the post office or it is a toy shop, it's like, yeah. I, I'm, like listen, he doesn't know that's 50p and that's yeah, 35 yeah, yeah, pounds. Yeah. But I was having this conversation with my auntie. I said, but it starts now for yeah. me because you just can't think it's okay yeah. to go and get... Want, even want, even want, it's just yeah. the thing out of the chocolate shop. It doesn't yeah. matter that it's 45p or a pound. Yeah. But it's that, no, you can't just have that. I mean, the people in the post office last time actually probably thought I was hurting and kidnapping <laughs> I put him in the car. I put two arms out. I want it! And I was like, right, this starts now. So... <laughs> Maybe because I'm still a little bit scared of him. I just uh, don't now take him to the shop. But yeah. there's got to be a way to navigate that, I guess. I think that's a good point because I think I'm a bit not better than that. But, I mean, I, I'm quite cocky that we go to a charity shop to buy toys because I think, oh, one, it's cheaper. But actually, they don't understand. They don't really know. The value. It's a charity shop. So, yeah, yeah they don't know value. So, for them, it's just like being in Smith's anyway. Yes. So, actually, that's something to consider. Thanks for that. Yeah. That, um, I don't know. They would still have to earn that toy yeah. or something but I say my husband's completely different so would and he I just go and give it to them behind your back then not behind your back but like yeah, oh, a little bit I've maybe yeah a little bit Where's that and I from? think I think it's from and my mum used to be I say actually my mum's very hard but like they both came from nothing like my husband had a really not a great upbringing or um come from no money um 
so I think he's that type that to have a nice watch on his wrist would be like would mean a lot whereas I, I've not come from money not or not it. I'm um, just a working class. normal yeah yeah upbringing um, so I wouldn't have value on that that doesn't mean something that I'm okay like I bought non-branded trainers for the kids the other day that wouldn't bother me to buy trainers in a supermarket but he was like, oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. Because that for someone to think that he was poor would be embarrassing. So I think yeah. that's his nature. He's not like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's been with me and I couldn't care less. Like, um, So that's changing. But I think that's where it comes from. A little bit like my mum. I think when you come from, so she's from the East End, when you come from nothing to then she would just spend her last. Like if Mark had five pound in his pocket, he'd go and buy everyone a drink of what, or whatever he could afford he'd Oh. buy for people like he's very generous or just giving I don't know yeah would spend money like my mum when she first made money like she'd spend it maybe I don't know and maybe I think there's... as well if you strip that back though it kind of it gives you worth though doesn't it because he's like well I've come so far removed from having to buy like shop or supermarket yeah, yeah, yeah. trends yeah. that I want to give my son well, more think... whereas you're like but it doesn't, there's no value yes, on it of course. but him for when he was younger that would have been embarrassing because it's like no you'd not want to um, I suppose status and class is different now, but like you wouldn't want anyone to think you were poor or couldn't yeah. afford. So there was always a show front to that. Um, so it's quite so an insecurity. Is so what are it the is. boys quite resilient then? Um, yeah, I, I think so. I don't, don't know. They, really yeah, they're young, old, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah, they're young. So I don't know if... Uh, Forrest is quite strong. My youngest, my daughter. She's the strongest, I'd say, from the three of them. <laughs> but she she was a, a twin when I was pregnant, so I think she's just a bit of a fighter that she even... I had a bit of a nightmare pregnancy with her. Um, and did you lose the other That she's twin? about, yeah. I was on a oh, flight. Sorry. I'd literally just taken off to go on a shoot. And I think it's when you went into that next atmosphere bit and just literally just it was How bleeding everywhere. And I was like, oh, fuck. It was two days before my 12... Month scan, twelve weeks scan. Did you, did you know it was twins? Um, no. So I was like, oh, like I've it? lost the baby. There was a doctor on the flight. It was so embarrassing. The doctor on the thing they had to turn the aeroplane round oh, and God. come. And I was like, oh, everyone's going to hate me. Do you know what I mean? Um, so landed, yeah, but and just bled for quite a while. Do you know what I mean that was a bit of a was yeah, that not tra- fun. Traumatizing there. or not? I don't know. I think I only got a bit sad. Again, I'm quite practical. Do you know what I mean you just crack on? I was like, oh, lucky that uh, there's still a baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then only I had this thing. Have you heard closing of the bones? Have you heard that? No, what's that? Um, you you have it because you store. I don't know if it's just women, but or people. You store a lot of your um, trauma or a lot of energy in your hips. So it's the gut, isn't if it? you yeah, if you have had a trauma or a lot of people have it after um, they've had a baby, and. Um, you basically get wrapped up. It's a bit of a medieval um, process. Like, I didn't do it, but a friend did it, and she had to give like her period blood and stuff. And it's all a bit of a ceremony. Yeah. Um, and they wrap you up, and and then she said to me, and I'd never really said to anyone before, and she was like, oh, she she thought maybe I'd had an abortion or something, and she was like, oh, you you like lost a baby, yeah, yeah. And only from then, you know, when you're a bit conscious of it, and that was maybe a good year later, that now every now and again I'm like, ah. Oh, do you imagine? And we've got a lot of twins in our family. Well, it kind of brings me to my next question because off air we had a little conversation oh, and yeah. I was like, if not this, then what? Yeah. And you were like, oh, I was kind of looking at doing midwifery. Yeah, yeah. And I still I was a bit gutted. At, so if anyone's listening from um, the online university, the system was a bit crap. They, <laughs> they wrongly sold me into a course that I couldn't do. Um, but yeah, always. I, I, I applied... Um, I'm a, <laughs> Look at me, I just winged it. I applied at King's. Was it King's University? I didn't get in. I didn't have a degree. But I was like, yeah, of course I, sh- I should be able to do this course. Do you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, still something that I'd love to do. Whether I do a... So this, I was trying to do an online course. I only applied this... Sh- and what happened? This, this year. Fiddly. It was wrongly... Sit- like, it, it, it's, it advertised it as if it was just one term at Oxford. And I thought, OK, amazing, quite liberating. I might have a couple of months off work, which I've never never had two hours off work. Do you know what I mean? I was like... I've got this new guy who I think could run stuff, and I'd still be working, but remotely, and I'm going to go and do one term remotely, and I'll be able to do this the rest of it online. But no, the whole course was in Oxford. I was like, so Never I can't do it. No. And I was like, can I drive, like, just for the times and stuff? But So that's why. But maybe I'll apply for a different... You like being a different busy, course though, don't you? or something. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what? Literally, what else? I'll learn. What 
I learn a little I'm bit start, of Portuguese. I'm start mosaic tiling yeah, I know. In the yeah, house. I do. Don't get me wrong. Honestly, I've actually got on my porch. <laughs> Don't. On my porch, I've got uh, packs of tiles. That was like I'm because we tiled, we mosaic tiled all, all of the Don't store in New York. Yeah, no, in New York, we did all the tiling. So we did like a mosaic palm tree like on the counter. Oh, um, I need to have a the changing look. rooms all like mosaic mirrors. It's amazing. So what's next for Never Fully Dressed then? Like, because you've spoke about a lot about like yeah. you've woken up a bit now, yeah. you're being a bit more intentional. So. With that in the room, what does the next bit look like? Um, I'm excited. And actually, just to give credit as well, the girl who's head of brand, like she taught me that. We, um, a bit like you said, if you get a troll, you know, when, some, when people, I, I don't mind, if we ever get negative feedback or something, I'm like, okay, I will always DM them personally and be like, like, thanks for your feedback. Like, of course, that's how we grow. Like, And um, we got some feedback and George was like, um, well, okay, that's fine. It is what it is. You can't change that. You can't... I don't think it's good to get um, publicly into anything like that. We just do the groundwork. So you continuously work on that foundation. And eventually, do you know what I mean? Those foundations will build into something. So you can't... Brick by brick. You can't, yeah, you can't go for that top... A bit like what we were saying, the resilience or the work in it, something. You can't just go to build that steeple or whatever it is. And... Um, because it will crumble. You have to just do it brick by brick. So just working on that foundation. So I think we're doing that and just being really strict like strict with how we approach that. Um, now before, like we would have kind of done any collaboration or anything. Whereas now, okay, no, really conscious of who we align with, where we want that voice. I think we can be a massive player in that inclusive sizing. In, in inclusive, yeah, but I suppose globally and... Yeah. Um, in inclusive fashion, in making fashion and at, in fun. Celebration. celebration. And I really got back that from this, looking at yeah. your clothes. Like it was a celebration even when you put the behind the scenes yeah. on and like the skirts and like yeah, everything. Yeah. And like, it's like, it, and you're so right. Like your clothes are an extension of you. Yeah. So why would you not want to celebrate that? To be parts? that energy. Yeah. So it's, like you never saw that. Like you said years ago, you got like, listen, I'm not Kate Moss, whatever, but like yeah. these women that are like very waif like, and it's like yeah. no one looks like they're having fun. I'm like, dude, yeah. you're wearing a ten thousand yeah. pound outfit. Fucking smile. I know. Yeah. So just bringing that to it, and I love, like I say, our energy on set and everything that people enjoy it. Like it's, yeah, that's what it should be. So I, I just want to amplify. So I, I feel like I say the last eighteen months just working on quality, but it, not just in product, but systems, ways of working, how we approach business and stuff. So. I feel like we've been working on that and now it's just to run with that and just have fun and amplify that voice that I think we've built. Yeah. That's what I'm excited about, yeah. Um, and so for you, what? how would you deem Never Fully Dressed being as successful? Because it's not just in terms of the monetary, is it? No. That, so and, when and do you go to so you hard. I have this conversation with I'm everyone. Clean. We've cracked it this year. I don't think I ever would. I think a lot of people, just my entrepreneurs, have that in them that... Those goalposts always move. But we never get there. That's the yeah, whole point, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so true. And and but just to enjoy that process. So Stephen Fry was speaking. He was like, "Oh, you have this idea of what success looks like for you, and is it that little suburban house? Do you know what I mean, two kids, a dog, whatever success and happiness looks like for you. Once you, if you're there sitting there, that's not it. Do you just know what I mean? It's the journey. So I think it's painting. so much more important to enjoy that journey, which. Um, I think I'm starting to do as well. Actually, enjoy that every day in it um, because it is. That's the bit that you and I think you can probably learn from. enjoy it a little bit more, knowing that you've got this infrastructure behind you, like you say, the bricks, the this and that. Like yeah. you know, it's not getting taken away from yeah. you because you've got this framework of like dedication and hard work behind you. So it's like trusting where that's going to yeah. go. You're meant to be almost. And I think a bit like what we said. When you're honest about anything, no one can surprise you no one can take anything away from you no one can you can sleep well at night because you're you've approached everything honestly there's no if you're pretending to be something or come to something in an not in an authentic way then I'd just be nervous all the time because you would feel like someone can pull something yeah. from underneath you but there's such a strength and a Back groundedness um, to that honesty then unapologetically you. Are, and I think that's yeah. a lot you see in um, 
your social stuff and the women should be unapologetically themselves. Like, So you don't edit any of your pictures. No. No, and I think it's such a beautiful thing to see because when you look at these pictures that are like so edited, like yeah. none of us look like our Instagram. Even like, for like, me though, I think, and that only, I think that was in COVID and I think I was doing a story in COVID and naturally just went to put just the little Paris on. I'm not saying like a bunny yeah. is or anything like that, but just like, okay, maybe I look a bit tired. That smoother skin yeah. looks a bit nicer. But I think they're the more dangerous ones that from that day, so I'd say from for at least three, about three and a half years, um, we've not used one filter that like that because I think that's not what skin looks like. Skin in the morning looks like this. Do you know what I mean? You look a bit tired or you look a bit whatever, um, and I think and that I think gives it's... the women a platform to be seen because you're like, yeah, that's me. That's me yeah. with the uneven skin and a bit of the breakout. Yeah. I mean, my bags are a joke in the morning, no. but it gives the women the platform going, yeah, like this is what women look like. And it's just not this, like Kardashian type thing. I know. And I don't, listen, I don't want to sit here and talk poorly about anyone yeah. because it's just not the way I roll, right? But I struggle with that lot, yeah? yeah? I've never followed them, I've never watched it, but like, even when that Chloe, do you remember someone put a picture up on her unfiltered and they sued the um, newspapers, oh, they sued know. this, like that. I don't really follow. No, but you're a mum. You're yeah. someone's mum. Yeah. You should, sh And she looked beautiful. Yeah. But you look at them, you're like, we're giving almost these yeah. false yeah, no, standards. That's what, again, coming back to the kids, that's what I struggle, why I struggle with it because you're, presenting to your children that that's what you genuinely think is okay because subconsciously you say that that filtered picture is better than what you look like yeah. so you're so then your kids are aspiring to aspiring to be or look or whatever like something that's not real and that what society in our day and age has deemed as more attractive Perfection. or more yeah whatever it is I think that's really, right. but really like, almost damaging. taking it back to what you had on the market stores, right? Like yeah. you were born to be imperfect. Yeah, yeah. Like not every piece you were going to make was going to be the same. Yeah. Like, like you just spoke about the ASOS yeah, stuff. It's yeah, like having yeah. beauty in that little bit of imperfection. I'm not saying yeah, <laughs> go yeah. up with like unsewn garments, but yeah. it's like you know, like we are well, imperfect. It's just more story to yeah. tell about something. Oh, that hole in my yeah. jacket. Oh, that was because this dog yeah. bit. Well, I don't know. Just a story. There's more story, more depth, more interest i think to that yeah no i think that's um so yeah we don't filter we don't filter anything so and i feel quite you, strongly about yeah, that yeah i do yeah um how do you want to be remembered though aside from never fully dressed how does lucy want to be remembered i don't know and this i suppose maybe us i don't know um i just want to be you want to be quite kind don't you you want to be kind i think people would say i'm quite hard working kind i'd like to be a good mum now for me it's not really about you is it so then you think okay yeah. and maybe that now for me reassessing how I use my time because you subconsciously make choices with your time and that is who you become do you know what I mean you might say I haven't got time for this I haven't got time but you've made those choices so if I haven't got time to go to the gym that's not a priority to me clearly um so for me yeah now just time with the kids I think and making sure they've Got the best. It goes so fast. So, yeah, it? yeah. I, think, I always feel like I was just an old witch in a rocking chair. I said that, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. "Whoa, where's that gone?" Yeah. Then someone freaked me out the other day, and they're like, "They're only it's only magical till they're five. And I'm like, "I've got uh, 370 yeah. days left." I'm like, "That on the chalkboard." Yeah, Fran. I know my eldest is questioning. He knows that we do the elf, but I know, yeah. and he's like, "Can't wait to see what the elf's gonna like." Crazy. I'm like, "You know, I know you know," but he's not saying he knows. I know he knows. Um. So yeah. So, but then equally, that being said, my mum and dad worked all the time. We had like different people pick us up from school every day. Do you know what I mean? Because they were working. My mum worked all the time. And I thought that was great. My older brother and sister, all of us just have such a good work ethic from that. And I never felt, un felt unloved or like never felt hard done by it. That for me, I was lucky and proud of that. And I still am so proud of them. Um, so I think we're in a bit of a, sorry, um, a bit of a, not indulgent. Again, I toy with this on being aware of your emotions, like uh, of oneself and self-love and everything with it. Um, and sometimes just getting on with it and look for others. I mean, Francis is, is the, the prayer of Francis of Assisi. Like, um, yeah. I think you get more, I was always raised, again, maybe I was raised Catholic or that whole, like you get more out of giving than receiving, yeah. that whole, a bit of an old fashioned 
ethos. I don't know. So I struggle with, I don't think then, oh, because I love my kids and I want them to have that, to just give them everything and give them all of you and give every, like, you, uh, because I think then they don't learn in a certain way. So it's, where do you get it right? But I think there's well, a balance like, somewhere. It's like, you know, you, we, we're meant to fail. Like I went yeah. and done something called the Hoffman process. And, oh, did you? Yeah, and I let, I, I walked out one of the rooms at one point, the lady come out and I was like, I don't need to do this bit. Yeah. See, I know my shit, don't yeah. I? Um, I don't need to do this bit yeah. because it was like, I was like, because I'm not going to fuck him up, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and yeah. she was like no we're, there's no right away that we're all gonna be like traumatised or scathed from life listen varying yeah, yeah, degrees yeah, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. we're not living in Gaza at the moment yeah. right um, and it's like giving them the grace and freedom to let that happen yeah. as well in like the same breath yeah. Um, as you know, the podcast is called Getting There. Yeah. And I was going to ask you where you're going and stuff. I feel like the beauty of you is actually you've been quite unattached to a destination. Yeah, I think I'm quite a nomad. Actually, I've just started reading. I'm really not a very good reader. Um, Billy Connolly's um, biography. The Rambling Man is oh, called okay. a new a new book. And the um, beginning of I'm literally like, oh my gosh, that's me. Like it's a rambling man is not a because someone might not be moving about, but it's just a way of being. I think I'm just a little bit of a... Um, Free spirit. Yeah. I've got one of my good friends who I lived in LA with and, and London with. Like We're both quite similar like that. like that. And she says it. She's, she hasn't got children yet, so she can move a little bit more freely. But I think... I don't know. Well, yeah. I think there's a lot of... Um, I'm excited. I think there's so much. Like, part of me, I think it's a weird age because I feel like... Part of me, you're like, oh, I'm getting old, da, da, da. but I'm like, I'm, I'm so excited about because you know who the you rest are. of my life. Yeah, yeah, and you know who you are, and you know what you stand yeah. for. And I think you spend your twenties and your early part of your thirties like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. And then you're like, no, this is me. This is what makes me happy. And like the conversation when we spoke, it's like, if I really met a bloke at this age, it's like, I'm yeah. so firm in my yeah, boundaries yeah. that I know who I am. That you'd yeah. be like. Yeah, you know, next factor, it's like. Meh, yeah. meh. The DHL yeah. guy said that as well. He was like, you spend your twenties. Being so worried what people are thinking of you. Like, in your 40s, then you care a little bit less. And in your 60s, you realise no one was even thinking about you in the first place. Yeah, like, and I no think it's so good. judging yeah, you I know. the way it's you're so, judging you. It's so liberating. My friend, the girl who I just said um, I lived with, she's from Northern Ireland, and we were getting ready to go out at a club in Northern Ireland. And um, her mum came in and was like, what are you doing? She was like, no one's looking at you. Like, get over yourself. And it was so liberating. You're thinking... Oh my gosh, actually, no. This, I say, I never used to be on our Instagram, only from COVID, when we couldn't get anything shot or couldn't get anything filmed. I was like, oh, I've got to be that person. And it's so liberating thinking, oh my gosh, one, no one cares anyway. Yeah, yeah, and two, this is what I look like. This is what I am. So it is what it is. Yeah, and and it's just liberating. You know when people go, oh, I don't want to be in that picture. And I think, why? Babe, what do you think you're... You think you're prettier than what the picture is going to show? Because no, that is what you look like. Yeah. Well, I think in what we're living in right now, right? Yeah. Everyone feels like a mini fucking celebrity because this is my page, oh, yeah. and you're like, oh well, five thousand people. Yeah, it's yeah. like no, it's not and the let real me world. promise you, like, and yeah. a lot of my fears come up. It's like, listen, off camera, like, and which, which the people have got to know me more now, right? Yeah. But it's like the chaos and the madness yeah. is like that's me, and it's funny. We've got a mutual friend called Danny. And one of the girls in a nail shop, I wasn't really online at the time, was like, I then come in like a bull in a china shop. She's like, Danny, what the fuck? You wouldn't have thought she was like that from the page. And so when I came to start doing this, I was like really fearful, like, should I talk to a stand? And I was like, do you know what? Oh, you're gonna brilliant at be this. Me. Yeah, but you're brilliant like, at like this. Someone said to me, I won't say who it is. Because uh-huh. What's gonna make you different? For ages? I was like, oh, oh. But it's fucking it's me. Yeah. And there's no right or wrong answer. So when I started this, I had a PR company go to me. Um, you know, blah blah blah. I want to represent you, but you need to start thinking about your listener. You need to start thinking about what they're going to get in week in, week yeah. out. And I said. And on that note, we won't be working together. Because yeah. if I spend my week worrying yeah. about 40,000 people and what yeah. makes them happy, yeah. then it's not me. But you attract, you will attract the right people. Um, and they have to sit in line with what it is. And like yeah, but you will attract that rather than working yeah. for the people. I remember when I said to James, I was like, I've just had my iPhone fixed in this mm. like legal phone shop in Bond Street. And I've met an 18-year-old male escort that's about to go and have sex with a 72-year-old Let's woman. get him on the podcast. He's he was the second. It was the most downloaded one. Yeah, I see. So he's, 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 he's 
Daddy is like the biggest writer at Miami, wow. blah, blah, blah. But you come in, I don't, you've got to watch it, right? We cover yeah, his identity. Yeah, well, and yeah. I knew it. Oh, and I you? met him, yeah, because obviously the people he works for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 18. He's raped by his stepmom at 12, blah, blah. Oh, but there's gosh. so much. It was like wow. his journey on getting there and so much. And I, I messaged James and I said, they'd be like, this is like before I've even started. And I was like, oh, what do you think? And I was like, you'll say yes or no. And then I was like, yeah. actually, I don't no, give a fuck. Is and I'm James doing. is mad as yeah, me, yeah? yeah? James is like, let's get him on. So yeah. we brought him in. Uh, yeah, and he's like, someone else there. It was, it was just a bundle of laugh. But listen, I want to yeah, thank you. Yeah, There's thank something you. in that bag for you. Yeah.